This is Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist, and it's a Cosmic Queries edition on a subject that I don't know a damn thing about. Blockchain, cryptocurrency, we've heard about it, we've seen it, and I count myself among the profound ignorant <laughs> in that subject. So we have to do a show on it. I have a new co-host. Oh my gosh, Marsha Belsky. Marsha, welcome to Star Talk. Woo, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am also very ignorant of oh, okay. cryptocurrency. And when people have tried to explain it, I mean, I'm not even good at the basic finance stuff. So this is like next okay. level. This is, I'm in, I'm in PhD and I haven't gotten my undergrad, but okay. I'm going to try. Excellent. So you're a stand-up comedian, a musician, a writer, and you, you had a hit song recently that's just completely crazy. It's just <laughs> completely, it's called 100 Tampons. We'll get you to explain it later, but with a title song like that, you, you know, we need, we, we're going to need an explanation. Yes, not, you got <laughs> it. And it's space related. <laughs> and space related. That's what makes it even better. So let me introduce our expert here. Since neither you nor I, Marsha, carry that, uh, uh, that expertise, we have got Dr. Sandra Johnson. Sandra is the founder. Let me check out my notes. It's founder and CEO of multiple companies. Um, the one, uh, her day job currently is Global Mobile Finance Inc., which is a fintech startup company. She's got multiple degrees in electrical engineering and has 40 patents. Is that more than 40 patents pending? Is that right? Or issued and pending, yes. The, it, issued and pending. Okay, th thanks for that. And you're also a visiting scholar at North Carolina A&T. Sandra Johnson, welcome to Star Talk. Oh, thank you very much, Neil. It is certainly a pleasure to, to be here. I look forward to having some fun. The, you, excellent. And um, part of your background takes you through IBM in Africa. So what was that, that about? That is correct. What, what, what happened there? That is correct. Well, you know, 26 plus years at IBM. And after about, I don't know, 22, 23 years, and I was thinking about uh, what I wanted to do next. I actually ha uh, went on a trip to Africa and had uh, a eureka moment when I visited a, a slave castle in Ghana. Uh, and it was through that experience that, you know, I, I found my purpose and destiny, and that is to focus on leveraging my technical skills uh, to help the people in Africa to raise their standard of living. So I then went looking for opportunities to do that with IBM, uh, ended up uh, spending three years in the Middle East and Africa, two years in Dubai, and one year in Nairobi, Kenya, but all three years traveling throughout the Middle East and Africa, primarily Africa, uh, visiting more than 22 countries, many of them several times. Wow. wow. And so I was, I was the CTO of IBM Central, East, and West Africa. It sounds like we can create four other shows based on your life experience, <laughs> <laughs> but we have to like be selective. And so uh, right now we're, we're going to be thinking about cryptocurrency and we solicited questions from our eager uh, uh, fan base, our uh, patrons, Patreon members. And so just t tell me, um, Sandra, what got you into cryptocurrency? Well, I, I'm always one to always uh, be aware of and try to learn about uh, emerging or uh, leading edge or bleeding edge technology. Yes, bleeding edge. That's bleeding the one. Edge, right. <laughs> yes. So, mm -hmm. um, so a few years ago, when blockchain was just starting out, I started, uh, you know, talking to people about it, reading up about it, learning about the technical details, and then it just really took off in terms of hype, right? Uh, and so I sort of rolled the wave in terms of uh, keeping myself abreast from a, a, a knowledge perspective of, of what blockchain uh, is all about, what cryptocurrency is all about. I even thought about leveraging it and my fintech startup as well. So is the first question we ought to, Marcia and I ought to be asking is, what is blockchain? So like, we just, the, yes. is, that, is that the entry level, like kindergarten preschool question that since we you were in since the old stuff you've been listening to them since the old records like you were in before everybody <laughs> knew it was cool yes, yeah yes. yeah so what is blockchain what is cryptocurrency what's the difference between the two 
Yeah, well, uh, let's start there, please. <laughs> okay, so so blockchain, I, I think of it as the foundation, the technology foundation to uh, get things done. Uh, it is really, uh, I'm sure all of us are familiar with, well, maybe not all of us, all of us older folks are familiar with what's <laughs> called a ledger. You think about a black bank ledger where you put entries and the ledger and the ledger. What, what, what blockchain is, is you can view it as a distributed ledger. It's an electronic ledger, but it's a distributed ledger. Uh, and each entry is what's considered a block, if you will. Uh, and that block essentially contains a list of transactions. Okay. And so a blockchain is essentially a chain of blocks, which is essentially a distributed ledger that if it's public, anyone can read, anyone can read anything that was ever written on that blockchain, that, that link of ledgers. Uh, and once it's placed on the blockchain, it's immutable, it cannot be changed. And so in the essence, that's what a blockchain is. So, so what is it? compared to a ledger, Mm -hmm. So it seems so far what, from what you described, the only difference is uh, everyone can see it. It's unchangeable, as most ledgers really should be. Really. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it's distributed. OK, so so now what? Anyone in a well can see it. There's no centralized mechanism for it. So that's what I mean by distributed. Um, right. OK, so you re remove in the the the, the banker. Right, mm. right, right. In fact, you know, step back just a little bit of the history behind this. Uh, the first blockchain was the Bitcoin blockchain, which is B Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But it was the brainchild of this individual or group of individuals uh, 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 that we don't know. Uh, they wrote this white paper. The author is uh, Sakoshi Nakamoto. We don't know who he or she is at this point, but he wrote this white paper. That is this paper describing this idea of having a currency that's independent of companies, you know, and it came right after the recession in 2008. Right. So, you know, it was a financially based recession. So he came up with this idea. How can we come up with this currency that's independent of let's say, a, a, a central bank. And so that's- so not, the, wait, not only independent of a central bank, independent of a country. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and so that was the basis for the Bitcoin blockchain that was then created in January, 2009. So it's been 13 years, right? But again, it's the foundation. It's a distributed ledger where you put information about transactions, uh, that anyone can access, and uh, it's unchangeable. Okay, I have to check. I got to check with Marsha at intermittent m moments here. <laughs> so, Marsha, have you heard enough yet to be paid in Bitcoin for your stand-up acts? I mean, absolutely not, but not because okay, not I don't yet. trust it. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I, I'm fascinated, first of all, but also have like never felt more stupid in my life because I'm realizing <laughs> I think I'm at almost and not there are other people in my generation where this is probably different. But I'm realizing that I am in I'm a millennial, you know, I'm 32. So I'm in the exact age where I don't actually really know what a ledger is. They didn't really <laughs> teach us any financial literacy in school, I don't really know how banking works. It's always mostly been like when I was a kid, you know, I remember they taught us how to write checks, but like they didn't teach us any of the deeper stuff. And I'm also not Gen Z and younger who knows all about the Internet. You know, so what you're I mean? just so dangling like there and you're dangling over the crevasse of ignorance. I'm dangling in the cosmos. I'm like, <laughs> but it's so fascinating to me because I can see now because people have been long what I have heard talking about cryptocurrency as a way, like you said, to work outside these establishments. And I that never made any sense to me, but that's I'm starting to see how and why that is. Well, we'll like get that, in there, yeah. but just uh, uh, to alert Sandra, what it means is some people 
are not being helped by your analogy to a ledger. <laughs> just- no, but okay. most people probably are because people my age are probably listening thinking like, no, I know what it is. She's just an idiot. But <laughs> Okay, that too. <laughs> okay, okay so, yeah, I was just checking in. I was checking in with Marcia to make sure we're – we're on the same page. Okay, I'm like the Sandra. person they should put in the Olympics next to Michael Phelps to show how fast he's actually swimming. I'm how dumb people actually can be on this. I so, got it. okay, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Sandra, okay. continue. So, 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 I discussed at a high level the what blockchain is, like, which is the foundation. Like, now let's let's talk about crypto, right? And and I'll use an example. The most. Uh, uh, successful, uh, the most popular cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin. All right. And so uh, essentially, without getting to, into a whole lot of gory detail, uh, Bitcoin was created to incentivize people to add blocks to the blockchain. Every few minutes, a new block is created. So how is it created? Well, you have people that are called miners all over the world, all competing to be the next, to, to have the next block to be added to the blockchain. So they all have the- Wait, these are miners, not young people under age. These are miners like people like who coal are- miners. People coal who are mining for, mining for gold, for example. And so around the world, they all have their own blocks that they have locally, and they all compete to be the next block in the global chain of blocks, Okay. And how do they compete? Well, they work this very complex cryptographic algorithm that they use. I liken it to rolling the dice, right? And they're all rolling the dice and, 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 and one of them is looking for the double six. Well, they're all looking for the double six, but the first one to get it is the winner, okay? And the prize is you get your block to be added to the blockchain but you also get Bitcoin. And that's how Bitcoin is created. Uh, you get 12 and a half Bitcoin. Initially it was 25 Bitcoin, so now it's 12 and a half. You get 12 and a half Bitcoin if you get the double six. How do you know who, how, who, how? <laughs> <laughs> Marsha, help me here. How, how, how do so you, it's all, is it all luck? It's all yeah, just... how do you know? I mean, dice, when we think, yes, when we think of dice, we think of luck. Yeah. So, so, so I don't have this algorithm. Can I make my own algorithm? And how do I know if I've landed on the double six? They right. all, they all uh, use the same cryptographic algorithm. It's a very detailed computation. It's an algorithm that's programmed and they all are looking for a certain result. They all know what that result is, right? Uh, but only uh, it's very difficult to get that that result, you know, it's double six is a, a lot easier than the, it's a number that they're looking for. It's a binary number, 256 bit binary number. And they're all uh, calculating this algorithm that will give them a 256 bit result. How do you know if you hit the number? Because you know what the, you know what the number is. Mm. Just like you know what the double six is, you know. Oh, what the so they're is trying to find out. a way to get to that number using this algorithm. Yes. Uh, yes. And the first one to get the result, and the algorithm will use as input some of the data that they have on their block. Okay. Okay. So they crunch numbers using the data on their block, and they're all trying to get this result that they all know what it what the result is. So this so, ledger, so this so this distributed ledger is a ledger of pathways through the algorithm. You can say that. Yes. May I? Is that allowed? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't want to get over yes. poetized yes. about it because and, and actually if you I don't really want to liken this to poetry at all. <laughs> you, well, if you really want to get it, it is in that it makes no sense to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> in that way, they're the same. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I've been mean, sitting yeah. in class and the teacher is going, "What do you think it means?" And I'm going, "You know, you tell me." Okay. Well, so, 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 Sandra, what you're saying is that the miners are to to borrow terms I'm familiar with. They are printing money. But it's not printing, of course. But yeah, digitally yes. printing. You, you, you can look look at it that way because 
the winner, the double six winner, the person who gets that actual result first is the winner. And the prize is 12 and a half Bitcoin. Okay. So they are working for their pay. Yes. <laughs> in a sense. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. We got to take a, a, our first break. Uh, but when we come back, I want to know what the hell F NFTs are. Okay. And, and I assume Marsha does too. And right after that, I think we might have enough foundation to go to our questions. Uh, okay. Yes. With our Patreon members. Okay. okay. So when we come back, more of Stark Talk Cosmic Queries with Dr. Sandra Johnson. Stark Talk Cosmic Queries. This one's about Bitcoin and blockchain. And all that stuff some people know everything about and everyone else knows nothing about. <laughs> and I think my my new co-host, Marsha Belsky, and I are in the same camp. And of course, then we have an expert on it, uh, Sandra Johnson, uh, who's got huge pedigree in the tech world, started companies, got patents. Um, and you graduated, it's a summa cum laude with highest honors in, in, and what was that, uh, in what, the subject was in that? electrical and electrical engineering, yes, Southern uh, University, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So this would have been—I I don't know how old you are—but if you go back enough, electrical engineering was the department that had computer science in it, and so later on, computer science had its own sort of identity on a campus. But uh, that meant uh, you were in at the at the bait at the at the fr ground floor, front door of that. Uh, that 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 is correct. That is wow. correct. In fact. Uh, my PhD was also in electrical engineering at electrical and computer engineering. Got it. So that doubles yeah. that up. Right, right. Yeah. So Marsha, fact, Marsha what's your PhD in? Oh, well, <laughs> I got my undergrad in sociology. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, that's good. Was, if you're going to be a comedian, yeah. you, you need to know that sociology. Oh, my God. Exactly. Yeah. I all hope for that. the material on the stand up floor is there. It's just sociology. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But right. I, you know, I am so lost on the engineering stuff. And it's like, but it's fascinating to me because. Yeah, but I it makes me feel better that you also don't know okay. what she's talking about. Why are you basking in my ignorance? Why, why is that? No, you should feel sad for me. <laughs> no, I'm like, because then it's like, Elisa, and I know it's not just my intelligence overall. It's oh, like, I see. we're this all just, okay. you know, it's it's just a new field that a lot of us don't know about. And mm -hmm. But it's fascinating. It really is. It's crazy because people talk about it so much online. They and do. I think they do. People just it's, don't. It's, no, pre preoccupied online chatter. Yeah. So Sandra, mm -hmm. tell me, what are NFTs? Okay, so uh, crypto, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, okay? Uh, and there the are literally thousands of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, right? Uh, and, and those cryptos are interchangeable. That is, you can buy and you can use these uh, crypto uh, crypto to buy or sell goods and services. Uh, and, uh, and cryptos are what's called fungible. Uh, that is, you can interchange them. Uh, NFT is a non-fungible token. That is something that you cannot you know, exchange. It's a very unique unit of data. You can uh, compare it to, liken it to like a deed on a house, right? There's only one deed for the house, right? It's not interchangeable. Well, an NFT or non-fungible token is very similar uh, to that. Uh, it basically has two parts to it. This is all electronic, all digital. Uh, it, it usually has a digital asset, okay? Uh, and that digital, digital asset associated with it, that digital asset, has a certain value, you know, it's like a piece of artwork, for example. Uh, so an NFT is a unique unit of data uh, that, that le leverages technology to enable this digital asset to be placed on a blockchain. Oh my uh, God. And it can be bought and sold on the blockchain. In but the open marketplace. Asset. In, In the, the open marketplace, yes. Okay, so what you're saying is this is, so you turned physical objects like I, if I own a Picasso, mm -hmm. then I have that Picasso and you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you want to buy it, you come to me and pay money for it. But mm -hmm. that's, that's a physical object right. made of canvas and paint. 
And you're right. telling me you have your there is this world out there now of digital assets that are the an, digital analog to my physical thing that I have a possession of. Uh, you can think of it that way. It's not quite because the legal it's so new, bleeding edge that the the legal <laughs> the, the the legal focus has not kept up. <laughs> okay. But just for our discussion purposes, you can view it as that. Okay, so if you dumb it down enough, we can think of it that way. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Did I hear her right, Marsha? That's what yes, she just I, said. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking NFTs need better PR because, <laughs> like, that what you said makes sense to me. Where it's a token of like, because what people on the internet think it is is people paying thousands of dollars for a photo of an ape that you could Google, and it doesn't make sense to anybody. You know what I mean? But but your explanation as a part of these other two things, that makes sense. So it's like, I think we just need better PR out there explaining it to people. So Marshall, why don't we go to our uh, Patreon uh, questions right now? Because the, the, yes. there may be enough foundation there. So let's check it out. And tell me like their names and if they say where they're from, I always want to know that too. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, let's start with this one because you were talking about working at IBM. Um, so this is from... Yelmer um, von der Weyck, uh, which uh, looks like a Scandinavian name. And it says, hello, Sandra and Neil. I'm working in finance and my girlfriend is a blockchain developer at IBM. Most of the blockchain talk is about cryptocurrencies and NFTs, but the technology offers a lot more solutions that will change our lives. We would love to hear from Dr. Johnson about how digital identity applications work on the blockchain and how they will impact our lives. Ooh, there's a sociological question in a way. Yeah. Yes. This is yes. all very sociological. So, and it's, so, it's why, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Sandra, this is, you know, to just live within, you know, within the ledgers of tech geniuses or mm -hmm. does this have real world consequences? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I believe blockchain technology will change uh, the way humans interact. Uh, long term. <laughs> right now, there's a lot of hype, but I think moving forward in time. So to, to more or less answer the question, I'll give you an example. For example, uh, an example in the supply chain. You know, you, you're, you're a manufacturing company, you manufacture something and you want to ship it somewhere, right? You can actually use blockchain technology uh, and put on the blockchain when it was manufactured, uh, where it's going uh, and who's going to pick it up, uh, all of the details of that, you can, you can write a program, if you will. That's called a smart contract that gives you all of the details from A to B. Uh, and then once you finish that digit and put it on the truck, that automatically starts a chain of events that now many times is manual, stuff get lost, you don't know where it is. But if it's on a blockchain, you know exactly where it is at all times from putting it on the ship, from the ship reaching its destination, from it going from the ship to another truck and from the truck to the, the final wait, wait, Sandra, Sandra, FedEx does that for me. Is that a <laughs> blockchain? I know where my package is. I know when it got, I know when the label was created. I know, who signed for it? But if that so, got disrupted, it sounds like this could be could maybe fill in some of those gaps because we're seeing all these problems. Like that's interesting because it works outside of those. Like I still absolutely. don't get it, but I'm starting to <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Martha. You, you're getting it. You know. You okay. are <laughs> Thank you, Professor. <laughs> you know, even with FedEx, FedEx has partners. They sh they they may have their own separate databases storing information with blockchain everything is there everyone can go there and find out at the same time where everything is uh nothing should be lost and you know with fedex you lose things <laughs> okay and all <laughs> digital because a lot of companies i've worked for are not all digital right oh uh, yeah okay so Absolutely. so so um okay so that <laughs> That blockchain is not currency. That's a blockchain of information. Yes. That's why I remember I said initially, 
blockchain is the foundation. It's a general concept. Right. Currency okay. is, is, is different, right? Okay, so do you, you foresee a day in the not so different future where all information transactions happen on blockchains? Well, the overwhelming majority. <laughs> wow, okay. Yes, yes. I mean, think about if you're buying a house, for example. You know, you, you know, you have to make sure that the owner is the owner. You know, and you pay somebody to do that, a title search. Yes, on you blockchain, do. Blockchain, you don't have to do that. It's going to all be there, for example. Wow. Mm. Okay? okay, that's that's one example. So, and, and if you could just take that little thought and kind of extrapolate it to look at how we do things now and how we can do it if we had this centralized place where everything is placed, nothing is modified, and you can, you'll have access to it. Okay, could, could there be a comedic blockchain where they put funny jokes on it and then everybody, <laughs> you'll know you'll laugh? That you can never delete? No, you can you. never delete. No, thank you. I'm yeah, good but, on but, that. But think about this. If you have an M, uh, NFT associated with your joke, then if other people use it, you can get paid for it. This is what everybody has been talking about. This is the first time I heard about NFTs was somebody advised me to create an NFT from some of my material. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but thank you so much for suggesting that. But people have made thousands. I know some comedian made like thousands of dollars doing that basically. And I don't know mm -hmm. how, and I don't know who, but. People have made millions of dollars, particularly yeah. last year on this. Okay. Which is, so for that, that's like, I take a video of a set and I don't want to release a set it for is Netflix. Your comedic so comedic sequence of jokes. A set, right? Like a yeah, set, like uh -huh. a uh, a bit or a, like a mm -hmm. not you a bit. Know, an Can't hour, say we're bit an hour here. Jokes. Bit means something else. Right. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> this is different industry speak. Yeah. Right. But um, and so, so a set then, is you is getting it, up with a microphone and then sitting down, and everything you did between right. those is a set. <laughs> Correct. That's, okay. But so then it's like the the NFT would be the video itself that somebody then privately purchases so that they own that set that I That's did. Correct. Yes. But they don't own the material. They just own that video, which might be valuable if someone were like hugely famous or like if it were like, you know, like somebody huge, like if Amy Schumer did a set that wasn't released and then somebody... Yes, privately I bought think, it. Marsha, I think you're just about ready to teach the class. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> but that, that is uh, absolutely correct. And I'll, I'll give you some examples of some recent NFTs. Uh, Major League Baseball, imagine baseball cards, right? Yeah. They've done that, uh, made thousands of dollars off of that. Um, a year ago, December 2020, a 15-year-old teenager, you know, uh, learned about this thing called NFT. Uh, he's an artist. So he worked to put his artwork, uh, on, uh, create an M NFT and, and sell it on an exchange. Uh, and as of December 2021, just last month, he's made over a million dollars. Wow. See, that's where understanding this stuff would be so valuable. <laughs> Okay, so what's by, by the way, just, just for fun, Melania Trump's eyes, her eyes, has also been uh, created as an artwork that she sold as an NFT online last month. Wow. Okay, so, so can someone hack into the blockchain and change what everyone is thinking is permanent? Uh, it is highly unlikely that that will happen. I will never say never. <laughs> You just did, but it's, but it's highly. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I said. Mm, 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 mm. But it's highly unlikely. You can say you can say I will hardly ever say never. <laughs> I will right. hardly, hardly ever, ever say never. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, but it's highly unlikely. It's a very difficult to do. Well, it's difficult now, but I mean, you know, wow. with, with quantum computing, you can I, always change the algorithms to make it more difficult. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. So it's it's you know it's a catch twenty two. Oh, you have wow. to explain catch twenty two to Marcia to this <laughs> yeah. before her day. What's that? <laughs> oh, no, yeah. We read that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. So <laughs> they so, taught I, us we, how to read, just nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> we've got time for one more question before we take our second break. So what do you have, Marcia? Okay, great. Yeah, this one was interesting to me. Um, so this is from Richard L. Sanders, um, and it says. Once all Bitcoin has been discovered, 
what will incentivize anybody to keep auditing the blockchain if they know doing so will not result in discovering any Bitcoin? Ooh, I like that question. In fact, I like it so much, we're going to take a break. We're going to pick it up at the end of that break. See what I did there? So anyway, when we come back, more with Dr. Johnson and my co-host comedian, Marsha Belsky on Star Talk Cosmic Perry. All about Bitcoin, blockchain, and non-fungible tokens or tickets? Yes. Non-fungible toads <laughs> on Star Talk. <laughs> so we're back. Star Talk, third and final segment. Cosmic Queries, all about blockchain and Bitcoin. We've got Sandra Johnson here, who's a, one of the world's experts on this subject and been at computing forever. Uh, Sandra, how do people find you? Are you on social media or... You have a, I am on social media, yes. What do they um, call you there? <laughs> no, sorry, what do you call yourself? Dr. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Sandra KJ. Dr. Sandra? At Dr. Sandra KJ. At Dr. Sandra KJ, I love it. And, and how about yes. you, Marsha? How are we going to find you? I'm at Marsha Belsky on Twitter, M-A-R-C-I-A. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a TikTok, that same name, and then Instagram, it's Marsha Sky, S-K-Y. Marsha Sky, very nice, very nice. And Marsha, you you made headlines for this song about a hundred tampons. That's just a weird topic to title a song and an album with, because you, <laughs> you're also a musician. And and I, I, I'm I'm asking, I'm curious because I knew it had something to do with space, but I don't see. I know. That that's true, but I don't know why. <laughs> so could you yes. please explain? <laughs> so the story is, um, the song is about the first American woman they ever sent to space named Sally Ride. They tried to give her 100 tampons to take with her for a one-week mission. And the story is, so she technically never officially took them with her, but um, they they gave her a bag of 100 tampons tied together by the strings is how, this is from her, an oral history, I believe. And they basically said, is 100 the right number? And but of she course, said, how else would you connect tampons? That's the obvious way to do that, of course. And <laughs> see, the song is sort of about how even, even our rocket scientists might be a little blind when it comes to the lives of women. And um, just about how funny it is because NASA, you know, obviously is still pretty um, a male-dominated uh, industry. And um, although there's a lot more women um, than there was at the time even. And yeah. um, they also designed her a makeup kit to take with her to space because they figured that she would want. In case she met aliens, and then she the said, aliens. Exactly. You got to look pretty for them. And she basically said, no, thank you. Um, and so, yeah, I wrote a song about how, you know, remember when NASA sent a woman to space for six days and they tried to give her 100 tampons. Or in my song, I say they gave her 100 tampons because – she never officially took them, but in her oral history, they did. They did try and give them to her. That's, that's and cute. they and, said, and I, "Is a hundred the right number?" <laughs> and she said, "That would not be the right number." <laughs> and they're like, "Right, because it's too much, right?" Or, <laughs> um, so I thought that was a great story. Sandra, speaking of space and, and alien encounters, where <laughs> where apparently Sally doesn't need makeup, um, if, <laughs> could blockchain be? The basis of a currency, uh, interplanetary, intergalactic currency? Sure. Just like it could be the that blackchain, the actual crypto. Oh, sorry. <laughs> crypto, yes. Cryptocurrencies. Yes. Just like it could be a basis for a global currency. Yes. So we'll, we'll start there. It would be how the aliens study us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, Marsha, actually, you can make your song an NFT. Yes. Okay. I okay. Can do it. Great. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna message you about how to do that. Let's. Okay. I'll totally. give you fifty percent. Okay. <laughs> so, Marsha, just before we hit the break, there was a great question. Why don't you just read that real quick again? Absolutely. So this is from Richard L. Sanders, and he said, "Once all Bitcoin has been discovered, what will incentivize anybody to keep auditing the blockchain if they know doing so will not result in discovering any Bitcoin?" Mm. So you are assuming that the Bitcoin exists to be discovered. Bitcoin, I think so. That's what it sounds Bit, like. Bitcoin is created uh, to give, uh, uh, to award a winner, which is a little different. It's not like it exists uh, and then you 
you know, you get your little pics like a minor and go find it. It's not like an uh, Easter egg hunt is what right, you're saying. Right, right, right. So, so it's created when we have a new block, right? Now, there is a limit to the number of Bitcoins that will eventually be created. But it's not like it exists somewhere hiding and you'll go, you, you're going out to look for it, right? So it's just you keep at trying to get that next block on the blockchain. And when you get it, you get the Bitcoin. So you said there are thousands of currencies such as Bitcoin. So yes. isn't, and is there any limit? Could there be a billion currencies? And at that point, there is no currency. It's just, that what is, does that even that mean? That is correct. That, 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 well, just like, well, they're not thousands of currencies, but just like there are different currencies, what's called fiat currencies. That is what we know. Paper dollars, for example, is a fiat. There are different types of currencies now. There are also different type of, types of cryptocurrencies. Uh, thousands, actually over 10,000 right now, right? So obviously, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult to have a global currency with greater than 10,000, right? Well, that's one of the issues. Um, this is still bleeding edge. So I think moving forward in time, that number will dwindle down. Uh, for the most part, even now, most cryptocurrencies are not used to buy things. People just invest in them, right? Yes, you use crypto to buy NFTs. That's probably the most popular way crypto itself is used to purchase things now to, to buy NFTs. Well, that makes sense because uh, it's the same species. Right, right? yeah, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. right, right. So, but moving forward in time, there will come a time where we will use crypto to just buy goods and services that we that we buy normally now using fiat. All right. Like I want to buy an apple and then they tell me how much And Bitcoin. you can use a crypto to yeah, buy at, at some point in the future, not now. There are some businesses uh, that allow you to uh, purchase their goods and services uh, using crypto. And there's a website that you can go to that lists the different bi businesses uh, and then the type of cryptocurrency that they accept. Man. I can really relate emotionally to the people that were like living when dollars took over for gold. And yes. they're like, I'm just going to keep my gold. Thank you. Oh, you know, interesting like, transition. Like, yeah. Here's it's, this it's, piece of paper. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it's like, why would I trust that? And now we're going from paper to digital. And I think people are feeling wow. a similar way. That's mm -hmm. spooky. You're spooking yeah. me out here. <laughs> Give me some more questions. Let's see how many we can fit in this segment. Go. Yes. Yeah, so this question I think is interesting because there were a few questions about the environmental impact um, Ooh, of yeah. cryptocurrency. So I'm sure you're asked a lot. So this says, hello, Dr. Johnson and Dr. Tyson. How can someone invest in crypto ethically? It's something I've been interested in, but the environmental implications of the incredibly high energy use have kept me from getting involved. And that is from Chris Plotz. Why, why, why does this take energy at all? Is it just yeah, turning on your computer? That. Is it just the, the computer? The computational power. It takes a lot of computational power. The computer crunching the numbers is a very, very... Uh, computationally intensive, which means it takes a lot of uh, electricity to actually get the double six, in other words, right? Uh, and, 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 and for some uh, blockchains, you know, it takes the uh, amount of power, the equivalent of a small city, okay? What? Just to do one transaction. What? So it is computationally intensive, particularly the Bitcoin, and the second most uh, popular uh, blockchain, Ethereum, uh, with its Ether cryptocurrency, very, very massive amounts of electricity, right? So, Marcia, you got to admit, that's a cooler name, Marsha. You got to admit, right? Ethereum? Yeah. Way, <laughs> way better than Bitcoin. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. We I'll, need I'll a give me some yeah. Ethereum. Yeah. Now, but, there are other uh, blockchains that uh, have a different type of methodology to arrive at who the next, who, who the winner is, for example, uh, that are not as computationally in intensive. Um, even Ethereum, uh, although they've been talking about this for quite a while, is moving towards another 
a type of algorithm that is not as uh, computationally intensive. Therefore, it will not take as much electricity. They're not there yet. They've been talking about it for a couple of years. So there are alternatives to Bitcoin and Ethereum that are not as uh, intensive in terms of the amount of power. So takes. if you want it to be a green crypto currency, you create a, a solar panel farm that just drives the computer that, that I mean, you, it's, it's a solvable problem, it seems. Yes. Because not absolutely. all energy on earth comes from coal, right? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's another option. So cool. it needs to be sustainable. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Marsha, keep it going. Okay, so this, um, you were talking about how, why this work really inspired you early on. Um, so mm -hmm. I think this is interesting. It says, this is from Lydia from the Netherlands. She says, dear everyone, so that includes me, I guess. <laughs> As someone who has almost no knowledge about cryptocurrency and NFTs, it scares me that these things are growing and that paper money would be something for the poor people. Why does crypto have so much preference by so many people? And how can I prepare myself for the future? I relate love, to that. Yeah, I would like to know. Love that question. Very important uh, once again, a sociological question. Those are will, the ones I'm drawn to. Yeah, exactly. will the haves be crypto rich and the poors be uh, paper poor? You know, what, 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 <laughs> yeah, how's it, what's this going to look like, Sandra? Um, so, so, and whatever it is, we'll blame you. Yeah, it's not, it no, yeah. no, no, it's not me. I just know about it. <laughs> I don't create it. I don't create it. I just, I just know about it. And I leverage it. Hey. Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, some cryptocurrencies are very expensive. You know, for example, Bitcoin last fall, November, uh, got up to almost $69,000. It's gone down now to about 37000 or so. Per, so per unit, whatever. The per, per, per cryptocurrency, yes. Uh -huh. uh, so that's very expensive. But then there are others that cost much less, okay? So in, in terms of cost, it really depends upon the actual cryptocurrency. You know, my view is that as we move forward, and it becomes used more prevalently, uh, the cost will go down. Uh, so to, that, will, that will address the issue of, of cost. Uh, Wait, so I, I have a philosophical question. What does it mean for cryptocurrency to cost anything? Because it, it's right now, unlike the dollar, right, you can actually invest uh, in cryptocurrency. Wait, 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 wait. but I, I will buy cryptocurrency with my American dollars. You can do that, yes. Or I can buy cryptocurrency with some other cryptocurrency. Um, you can do that as well, yes. Okay, so if I buy with American dollars, the person who had the crypto now has my dollars and I have their cryptocurrency in exchange for it. That's correct. But in, there might be a day where everybody only ever wants cryptocurrency to acquire other cryptocurrency and so that no one will want the dollar and that will drop down the value of the dollar, won't it? I'm not an economist. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because, <laughs> you know, if you go down the street, the homeless person, you hand them some coins or a few dollars. No, I want cryptocurrency. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Well, you know, the, the, the mayor of New York, the new mayor, you know, said he wants to be paid in crypto. What? People are yes. kind of roasting him alive for it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, right. Because they, because yes. also, because when the Bitcoin is down, people were like, well, now this is like what Eric Adams is. Paycheck's actually going to be this percent less than it would have been. And I think people are just so, it's, it has such a like reputation as being for, in my mind, like white tech bros that I don't think people understand that there's like different people and like, like, incentives working on this because i think a lot of the fear is like these are just the top one percent making a new set of money for themselves but hearing you talk it seems like something so much different than that yeah right right now because it's still new uh most of the people who buy crypto bitcoin ether and others they they're speculating as an investor speculating yeah yeah they yeah. are speculating so it's just speculating. the wild west and yeah, it might settle somewhere. Like, four years ago, I mean, even though we thought it was high then, it was like 20,000, right? So now right. it's gotten up to almost 70,000. So, you know, it's, it's speculation. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yes. I don't know and if you, you have, have time to have a certain bravery to like, <laughs> or a certain comfort level to, right. to do that. Right. 
I don't know if we have time for another question, but I do, since I'm host, I can make time for my own question. <laughs> so, Sandra, so I, you know, I've been in computing for a while. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, since high school, at least, mm-hmm. and, and I'm old. So, but I've, so I've seen the power of computing grow. I've seen what, at, and particularly in astrophysics, there are mm-hmm. categories of problems that are intractable at any given moment with what the computing power is at that moment. And so we say, well, we need this extra power. And then so new problems get solved as computers get faster and more efficient and as algorithms get more clever. So why lock anything into, why lock an economy into something that's fundamentally seems to me about the power of computing at that moment? Because if in the future computers are a billion times more powerful, what you're telling me is what takes the whole power of a city. I mean, look at the computers from 1958. There were entire rooms to just to do four-function math. So, so, so why lock into something that seems to me to be something on a moving platform? You know, on a, to something on a, is a moving target for the power that computers will bring to that problem. Okay, so let's go back to the whole how much power it takes to uh, to uh, complete a transaction. You know, uh, much of that is because you have miners, remember them, all over the world. So as we move forward in time, more and more miners, miners are competing. It's taking significantly more computing power because of the bottleneck, right? So as you increase the power of the computer, that reduces the power to actually do the mining. Yes. So increasing the computational power of the computer helps that issue. I I get that, but then now I have a computer that just finds every single Bitcoin there is and I can do it this afternoon and then I'm the richest person in the world. So- I don't think we'll get to the point where, you know, it's um, um, the computer becomes more computational, computationally intensive, more miners are added. And, you know, it, it's sort of a loop. It keeps going. Like see. More yeah. miners, more power needed. You need more miners, more power needed, et cetera. Okay, so Marsha, the, the comedy club owner who offers you Bitcoin, are you going to say, no, I want Ethereum? <laughs> are you? <laughs> I would, the problem is like, I would say no just because I still, it's it's tough though because it's like I take cash and stuff even though I probably would still need to hire an accountant but it's like, yeah, I don't feel that I'm on the the bleeding edge enough mm-hmm. to to be able to do it. But then it's, you know, I think it's like anything, too. It's like I've heard stories of, well, there was this one guy I really trusted. He got me into Bitcoin. It turned out to be like a bad investment. And then I've heard stories of the exact opposite. So I think right. that's what keeps people afraid is the inconsistency of the um, what's it called? The reward. But right, right. so it's like for me, I still want my cash because I'm not at the point in my life where I can risk my paycheck being two thousand dollars less than it was supposed to. But I can understand why somebody who is in the financial position to do that would do that because it could potentially have a great bigger future payoff, not just for them, but for their kids. To I think it's like diversifying your portfolio in a way. It would make sense to have stocks, have crypto and also have cash, but you need to be at a certain level. You have to confess, though, you've come a long way, not you, you, but you as as representative person in this conversation, you come a long way from the days when you might have just accepted a chicken for payment, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've, that's, it's like, it feels so scary to me, but I'm seeing it in my head like that, where it's, I bet it's the same that people felt when we went from, you know, cowrie shells to gold, from gold to... Right, whatever but right, right. not for me not yet but i am but i i'm interested by it all right well sandra we're gonna have to do th- we, we this is this topic is ever ever growing yes. and yes and uh we might have to do this again do a part two mm-hmm. uh and you have to give us buying tips <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah we can do that that'll be the most <laughs> popular that. star talk yeah. episode ever all right well, i made yeah. a million dollars right, right, right. all right but, do we, yeah, we, you have the richest say- fan base <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I must say I'm not a professional at this, so you know you buy at your own risk. 
No, but there you go. I, I, there is one thing I do want to point out, though, Marsha and, and Neil, you know, kind of alluded to uh, the volatility of cryptos, but that there are some uh, some co- some uh, tokens, if you will, cryptocurrencies that are stable. They're called stable coins. Uh, and, and these are associated with uh, a physical con- entity. For example, there's a USD coin. It's a crypto, but it's backed by the US dollar, right? Dollar for dollar. Uh, the same thing with gold or diamonds. So there are stable cryptocurrencies that you can actually hold. And many people, they they have these staple coins and then they they use them to buy the volatile cryptos and they go back and forth. Right. You know what this sounds like to me, Sandra, when Apple first came out with their Macintosh and they had the windowing system, mm-hmm. um, if you had a file and you wanted to save it together with other files, you put them in this icon on your screen that looked like a folder. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's not an actual yes. folder. Yes. It's a virtual folder. Yes. And then you throw something away, there's a little trash can. So mm-hmm. they they try to emulate your office environment mm-hmm. into the space that you are yes. operating on for comfort levels. Right. I guess. Yes. And and I, I, I make special note that in recent Macintosh updates of their system, their icon for their mail which used to be a stamp, is now just an envelope. Both of those are still kind of archaic, but especially a stamp. Mm-hmm. Because yes. the you know, Generation <laughs> Q or what's the latest gen- Z, whatever, they've never licked a stamp they in their life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, what is that? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we got to call it quits there. Great to have you both on Star Talk, both for their first time, new, new, newbies. Uh, yes. Very, very excellent. I, I love seeing some new new blood uh, flowing uh, through the rivers of uh, scientific enlightenment. <laughs> as we have okay, gotta go now. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun, and it was such it was so great to hear you talk, Doctor Johnson. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, Marsha. And call me about your song now. All right, oh, I will. <laughs> the hundred tampons. Don't miss it. <laughs> The 100 Tampons <laughs> NFT, be on the lookout. There's a YouTube of her singing it. So right, this has right. been Star Talk, Cosmic Queries, uh, all about cryptocurrency with Dr. Sandra Johnson. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.